Peace and Shalom Israel. Before we start the lesson, hit the notification button because we upload lessons every week and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover, we'll see what we can do. So until next time, cue the music. All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies Program. Welcome back. As always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath Day. This is part two of our lesson, The Will of God, or Thy Will Be Done. Thy Will Be Done. So if you haven't seen the first lesson, I would encourage you to take a look at the first lesson, even though both of them can not stand alone. But we're gonna go ahead and continue in our lesson so we can begin to unpack the will of God, the things that he wants in our lives. See, in the last lesson, I was just talking about how it's important for us to understand the will of God, for us to seek out his will, okay, so that we can lean into it and that we can make sure our whole driving force part of our entire duty is to get into his will okay and i'm part of that obviously is obeying him and going with the grain instead of going against the grain of his will which can be disastrous for us in the end if we do so so it is our job to understand him understand his will and it's going to begin with trust it's going to begin with how do we trust him once we hear that word do we trust do we run with it do we go with it or do we wait and do we uh cajole and we we we, we just kind of go over our minds and try to figure out some sort of way some sort of loophole so we don't have to go the lord's way that we don't have to submit ourselves to our will but for those of us who actually do want to submit ourselves to the will let's go into the scriptures so we can understand his will and we can submit ourselves so that we can be just fine in his arms in his protection in his provision for us let's move forward join me first in proverbs in proverbs chapter 3 and i want to begin in verse 5 we'll read verse 5 and 6 which reads trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. So here's the benefit. Verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So it is going to be, he the one is going to be the one that directs our path. He will direct our path if we are submitted to his will. One of the ways he we direct our path, or our path is directed by him, is sometimes it's through his spirit through his spirit where he's like nope not gonna do that nope don't do this that type of thing we just have to be inclined we have to have our ears inclined we have to be willing to submit ourselves to his guidance because a lot of times the lord will prompt us he will nudge us he will tell us he would stop us he would give us pause he would i mean it could be a number of different things but he can and will and has sent his spirit so that when we're trying to make choices to go left or go right or whatever, sometimes he does come step right in and help us. I'll give you an example of that. If you join me over in uh, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 6. Look at something right here. Acts 16 and 6, it says, Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. They said, nope, don't do that. Don't say anything out there. Look at verse 7. After they were come to Mysia, they assayed, assayed to go into Bith Bith Bithynia. Excuse me. But the Spirit suffered them not. Are we understanding what's going on? The Spirit's like, nope, not going over there. Nope, not going to do that. The same thing can happen to us in our lives. The exact same thing if we are willing to open ourselves up to things of the spirit 
See, the fleshly thing, we're not going to understand. We're going to have to be in the spirit to even accept his will, to even understand, to even hear from him. To even hear what his will is, to even understand what he wants us to do next, our next action. You're going to have to be in the spirit. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to fast. You're going to have to get quiet. You're going to have to meditate on his word to really come into communion with him. You're going to have to open yourself up. You're going to have to trust. See, there's a number of things that you and I have to do in order to know the will of God. And as we can see here, he will help question is are you ready he will help he has helped he will do it by his spirit but he has helped join me in Matthew 6 Matthew chapter 6 and I'm gonna pick it up at verse 9 and after this manner therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive yours. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So we just look, we just take a look at the Lord's Prayer and nestled right in there is thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, primary in our prayer is that we pray that his will is done. And by implication, we are praying that we are a part of that will. That we can be a part of that will, the will that he has for us. See, the question is, are you going to listen? Are you, are you going to actually submit to his will? Or are you going to find out what it is and are you going to submit to that will? And that is key and that is what's important. Join me over in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and picking it up at verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we have to understand the time in which we live. 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. Be ye wise. That wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. So we have to understand. Don't be unwise. Understand what the will of God is. That's how you get wisdom in this. This is part of the way you get wisdom. I mean, yeah, you lean out on your understanding, you know, and trust in the Lord with all your heart. I get that. But you be unwise. Be ye not unwise. Verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, whereas is excess, like not too much. But be filled with the spirit. That's what you should be drunk off of. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making medley in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what we have to understand i mean this is the will of god that we serve him that we praise him that we uplift him that we submit to him that we listen that we obey that we, we rejoice one to another a lot of people always asking you know what is it that the lord wants for me what does he want for my life what is the lord's will for my life we're getting a lot of clues we getting a lot of little nuggets and then we just get some straight out commandments that's the will. To love the Father and love your neighbor. To hear the whole conclusion of the matter. To fear the Lord and keep his commandments. The whole duty. So we know what the will is, but a lot of us, we want to pretend that like we don't know. It's because you don't want to submit to it. Because like I said in the first, in the first lesson, that it, because it requires some accountability. It, it, it requires some accountability. But brothers and sisters, it is a beautiful, wonderful, and magnificent thing. All you have to do is line up and put your name on the dotted line and say, I want to be a part of this. A part of that coming kingdom. A part of eternity. A part of something he has planned. A part of this resurrection. The right one. And we'll talk about that. This is, this is part of his will when you have an understanding that what, what's the end game? 
When you have that understanding, that end game, you got it. Now you have it. And you should be rejoicing. You should have that in your heart that the Lord saw fit for me to, 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 to give me his plan, to give me eyes that I can see what his plan is. To give me ears so I can hear his wisdom, that I can fellowship and build with other people, that I can learn, and that one day I may come into his presence and see his face. How can you not be happy about something like that? How can that not bring you joy? See, it starts with understanding the will of the Father. It starts with that and look at what you get. Look at what you gain. How can we not rejoice? How can we not praise to him? Hallelujah. How can we not do that? We have such a magnificent and glorious plan. And then he says, hey, you can be a part of it. Let us continue. Hebrews chapter 10. I just want one verse. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 36. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. I'll read that again. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So you're not doing this for, for nothing, brothers and sisters. Let me encourage you. You're not. This is not for nothing. There is something on the other side of this. There is a promise. And I can tell you this, the Father and the Messiah are beings that keep their promise. These are beings that will keep their promise. They will make good on their promise. And so all this that you and I are going through, it's not for nothing. It is actually for something. See, when you wake up, when we all fall asleep and you wake up, the end thereof, then you'll get the you will get the end of your faith. You will understand why you went through what you went through. And you will count everything in this life as nothing compared to what you're going to gain. This won't this won't mean anything. Your present suffering, it it hurts in the present, but what will it matter in the end? You're sick, you're tired, you're suffering. But what is it going to matter in the end? What is it going to matter in eternity? What's it going to matter? So our job is to get the will. And now that we understand it, we, we, we see what is it that he wants for us. Lean into it. Lean into it because there is a promise. There's a promise to be had there. It's not for nothing. Don't lose heart. Let's continue. Matthew 21. Matthew chapter 21. I want to start at verse 28. Matthew 21 and 28 says this. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and he said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. So he changed his mind and he went. And he came to the second. So he came to the second son and he said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them, so he said, which of them twain did the will of his father? So which one of these did the will of his father? They said unto him, the first. Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Understand what just happened here, brothers and sisters. Understand what just happened, okay? So he gives a parable of the two sons. He goes to the first son in the parable. Goes to the first son. He says, son, go out and work into the vineyard. Then it says, no, nah, I'm not doing that. No, nah, that's okay. And then he changed his mind and he went and he went to work. He went to the second son and he said, son, go out to the venue and go to work. Son said, oh, OK. But he never went. So he's asking the elders and the Pharisees and stuff. He said, OK, so which one did the will of the father? Which one did the will of the father? And they said the first one, of course, because it's an action thing to do his will. It's an action thing. It's one thing. Well, do they serve me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You won't put it into action. You understand what that will is, but you're not going to do anything about it. 
You're gonna have a teenager, same thing. You go into the room and you say, let's say you have two teenagers. You go into their room, you tell the first one, hey, clean up your room. He says, no, I don't feel like cleaning up. Then, then he changes his mind, got, all right, I'll clean. And he actually cleans. Now you go to your other teenager, you go to your second teenager and you say, clean up your room. And that second teenager says, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And you walk away, you come back, they never did it. Who did your will? Which one of your teenagers did your will? The first one or the second one? See, a lot of us, we can give lip service all day long. We give lip service all day long. We, oh, I love God. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love all that. But you're not doing anything. You're serving him with your lips. Are you serving him with your body? Are you serving him with your actions? Are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? Are you doing something? Even a little bit of delayed disobedience is better than giving lip service and not obeying at all, not doing it at all. Don't let that be you when you understand the will. You know the will of the Father. Now do something about it. The will of the Father. Go to Jeremiah 29. I, I spoke about that in the first, the first one briefly, at least quoted. But now let's go to it. Jeremiah 29. And we're going to start in 11. You guys know it. Very, 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 very famous scripture though. Jeremiah 29, 11. We're going to read it this time. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I mean, I will listen to you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you search for him with all your heart. When you do that, when you cry out, he is listening. To those who know his will, because those are the ones that he directs their path. We read about that in the first lesson. Those who, who know his will and does his will, he directs his path. He will direct your path when you seek out for him, when you cry out for him. He will. He'll listen. When you seek for him, you will find him. When you call him, he will listen. Those who want to do the will of God. That's the, that's the one caveat. That's the one caveat. Don't be the one. You want to give lip service, but you don't want to do anything. Don't be that way. Don't be that way. And ye shall seek me and find me, and when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and he will do it. This is the God of promise. And he keeps his promise. Let's go to Revelation 20. There is there's, there's an expected end there. Revelation chapter 20. And I will pick it up at verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, that he must be loosed a little season. I'm going to drop down to verse 7. And when the thousand years were expired, expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sands of the sea. So he's going to come out and there's going to be a lot of people deceived after this thousand year millennial reign. And some people are still going to go with them. 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. But I didn't want us to skip verse 9. So let me just go back to verse 9 on that. And he said, and they went up upon the, uh, the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. What, what is the camp of the saints? Jerusalem. And the beloved city. Hello, Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Then we have verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire or brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So we have uh, understanding now. This is all this is according to his will. This is the end game. This is the story that happens towards the end. This is the back end of the story of what's going to happen. Ultimately, Satan is defeated, obviously. The saints come into their kingdom. 
This is his will. And this is free will. We saw right here that when he when he comes out after the after the, the uh, after Satan comes out of that prison, like go, let's go back to seven. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now remember, when he went in, now his influence is no longer on the earth. His influence is no longer on the earth during that thousand year millennial reign. Through that thousand years, his influence is not there. So people don't really have the good and the evil, the influence and stuff like that. But guess what? You have free will. Because check it out in verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. So all over the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So he's going to come out after a thousand years and deceive a lot of people all over the earth to fight against God. Now remember, they... They lived on an earth, okay, where the Messiah is here and he's back in his kingdom because this is after the thousand years, but we're talking about the thousand. They're gonna, they, they, they live on an earth that has a Messiah and they have the saints. They have resurrected people from all throughout time. In no influence for Satan because he was in the prison for a thousand years. But then when he comes out, he deceives a whole lot of people whose numbers like the sands of the sea. Why? Because they have free will. Even at that time, they have free will. Now, it doesn't end well for them, but again, you can't say they didn't have a choice. See, you have to choose him. You have to choose his will. You have to choose that. You and I have to choose that. We have to figure that out. Even at that time, still got free will. So why don't you use your free will to seek his will? Let us continue. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. I just want one verse. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And just like he destroyed Satan and his enemies in Revelation 20, he'll do the same thing to your enemies. He'll do the exact same thing. He will destroy them. Just like that fire came down out of heaven and destroyed Satan and all the people he deceived, once and for all, finally, then you understand. Then you and I will understand. We will finally understand that he will help. He will help if you're submitted to his will. Be not dismayed. He's with us. Don't fear. The Most High says, I got you. I got you. Because apparently in Revelation, all these saints... All these saints, they, they were already submitted to his will. They, okay, The ones who did not get dismayed, they were already submitted to his will. And he said, I'll, I'll take care of you. Don't, don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. That's the power of being in his will. That's the power of being under his hand. That's the power of submitting yourself. Because you get protection. There's protection in submission. There is protection in submission. That's a whole different lesson. But there is protection there. We'll, do that. we'll deal with that in another lesson. Let us continue. Psalm 33. Join me over in Psalm 33. Verse 11 reads this way. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. So he's let, he let all of us know what his plan. He's going to let all of us know what his plan. Or at least enough to know to get salvation. Because really, ultimately, that's all you need to know. You don't need to know the Bible front and back upside down you don't even you don't have to know it like that you just have to know enough to get in his will that's you that's all you need to know that's all you and i need to know to understand how do i get in the in his will how do i do that which is pleasing in his sight how do i do that that's the question and the scriptures have the answers all we have to do is listen all we have to do is listen. Go with me to Job 14. Job 14. And let's pick it up over at 10. So Job chapter 14, verse 10, which read, But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man give it up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dried up. So man lie down and rise not. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. This is what happens to us, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Not until, not until it's all over. 
That's us all over. Then we can get into those scriptures that, you know, talks in, in, in uh, Thessalonians that talk about, you know, we're, that everyone's going to hear their voice, hear, hear his voice. Same thing we get into Daniel. All those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall rise. All these people. And this is the kind of thing that, like, even Job understood that. Even Job understood that there is a resurrection. This is part of his will. Part of his will is a resurrection. Now, obviously, his original will is that none of us should die. Adam and Eve were not meant to die. We understand that. That was the original. But some things changed, uh, namely sin. So part of the plan, that's fine. It's not like he did not know. He knew. That's why he also had the plan for the resurrection. He also knew he predestined a lot of things, meaning he knew. And people confuse predestination and free will and you just confuse the whole thing. Just because the Lord knows something, that doesn't mean you know. Just because he knows the outcome doesn't mean you know the outcome. So we go through it. It's just like if we were parents and we have a child. And they go play around with the light socket and want to stick a fork in it or something like that. Now, as a little baby, they don't know the outcome. As you as a parent, you know the outcome. So with the Most High, it's the same thing. If we make a bad choice, he already knows the outcome if we continue to make a bad choice. Now, he makes a way that we can atone and we can repent and we can get back in order with him. We can get back in line. But just because he knows what you're going to do doesn't mean you don't have free will. You have free will. You can go to the left or you can go to the right. Choose ye this day, this day whom you will serve. All this is free will. Death and life, all this is free will, what you want to do. Now, take your will and submit it to his will and all will be well with thee. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and I'm going to pick it up at verse 1, which read, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herbs, and as the showers upon the grass. Three, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. I'm going to drop down to seven. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. See, look who's going to be in charge, brothers and sisters. It's part of his will. The people who are going to ultimately have all this set in order because there's going to be a certain inheritance to the children of Israel. And we can see that inheritance. We can go over in the prophets and see what that ultimate inheritance is. See, part of that inheritance is this because the meat shall inherit the earth. Part of, part of the inheritance is the earth itself. Now, it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Don't get me wrong. It'll be a new one because this one is going to get turned upside down. There'll be a new one. But rejoice. This new one, this new dwelling place is going to be given unto Israel. But are you a part of his will? It's voluntary. You got to you got to want that for your life. For you got to want this for the next life. You need to set that up now while you are alive to make a decision on the other side. When the most high divided to the nations their inheritance when he separated the sons of man and he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel, just like in the kingdom, 12 gates, okay? Just is all divided up in a certain place. When we saw Israel and you look at a, um, a map of that time, you look at a map of that time, you see how, how uh, Jerusalem and the territories in that area and roundabout were how they were all where the, where the tribes settled and you can see where there's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom and all of this inheritance. Now they're not supposed to be divided and obviously in the end they won't be divided anymore but you understand now the whole earth will be given unto Israel and those who join themselves unto Israel. They'll have a place somewhere in Israel's domain. 
because he's given it to a particular children, those who are called by his name, those who are submitted to his will. I don't care if you're Israel or not. If you're Israel and you don't submit to his will, you're not in. You're not doing the will of the father. You don't get in. So it's not just a matter of just being, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter just being Israel. That, that does not matter if you're not going to do the will of the Father. It does you no good. Oh, I'm Israel. I, I know who I am. I'm, I, I'm woke. Doesn't matter if you're not going to follow the will of the Father. Doesn't matter. Go back to doing what you were doing now. Now you're awake and you're sinning. Now you're going to go to hell awake. Let's submit ourselves to the will of the Father. Now, I want to go to John, then I'm going to go to 1 John. So I want to go to, to John chapter 6, and I want to read verse uh, 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will, is the Father's will, which has sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Hello, listen, listen. 40, and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which see the son and believe on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. I don't want you guys to miss this. This is what Job was talking about. At the last day, at the end of the earth, when it's all over, when it's, this is the will of the Father, that we be reconciled unto him through his Son, and that his Son has the power to call anyone he wants and give them everlasting life so he can raise them up in the last day. So many of those who sleep in the dust and the earth will hear his voice at the last trump. Are we starting to get it now? All of this is a part of his will. All of this is what he wants to come to pass and it will happen. His word does not come back to him void. It does not return unto him void. You and I have to understand that and we have to let that sink down. We have to get that down in us. We have to understand this. So brothers and sisters, understand what we're dealing with here. As I said, we're going to go to 1 John now. But understand what's said there in 39 and this is the father's will which has sent me that of all which he has given me i should lose nothing so all the ones who are now under the messiah's authority but should raise it up again at the last day he said it there in 39 then he says it again in verse 40 and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which sees the son and believe on him so if you believe on the son may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. I will raise him up at the last day. Now join me over in 1 John, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16. For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but of this world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever that live forever that abideth forever that stays forever that he's going to give eternal life to those who abide with him forever that lives with him for they, they will live with they will dwell with him forever that's what the kingdom is all about the kingdom is about being on this earth the new one serving and going in and out of the new jerusalem and the king and the messiah is right there with us you have eternal life so no more being sick no more imperfections in uh, in us total perfection total glory a glorified body and dwelling with him so all those questions that you have it will they, they can be answered the messiah is right there the creator of the universe is right there the father right there new heaven new earth what order from out of zion the law of the lord will go forth all the nations will flow unto it this is this is the understanding that we're supposed to be getting and you will abide forever you will live forever let's 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 talk about that let's go let's let's look at that go to ezekiel 37. ezekiel 37 is right after lamentations ezekiel chapter 37. 
okay? Ezekiel chapter 37. Now, it starts with Israel, and you guys already know what um, Ezekiel 37 is. You know, Valley of Dry Bones. We're going to look at that. We're talking about a resurrection. We're talking about people that lie down and won't come up. This is the whole house of Israel. This is the whole thing. It's for all the marbles. Israel first. Israel first. And then those who are grafted in. Those who want to seek out the will of God. And then submit themselves to it. Ezekiel 37 and 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there was very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Meaning they were there for a long time. Okay, dead. So we're talking about generations and generations and generations of Israel. Verse 3, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answer, O Lord God, thou knowest. He said, Lord, you know this. Okay, verse 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Does this not sound like, a, is this not the perfect picture of a resurrection? That he's going to speak unto these bones. You're talking about generations of dead Israelites. And that he's going to speak unto these bones and they're going to be made alive. And he's going to put flesh and sinew and skin, put all, put them completely back together again. Does that not sound like a resurrection? And when you wake up, you'll know that he is the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. And the skins covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come. From the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So what is going to happen when the Messiah comes back? He's going to call them out of their grave and they're heading straight to Israel. All over the world, all Israel that is scattered to the four winds, all over the world, called out of that grave and were heading to Israel. You'll know that it's the Lord and you will not have to lose hope. Everyone heading straight to Israel. Understand this. 13. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Now you know where you're going after this is all over. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. This is his will, people. 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write it upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write it upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. And for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in my hand. So it won't be northern and southern kingdom anymore. It's going to be one Israel, one Israel. 18. And when the children of thy people shall speak against thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and I will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. Do we now get it? It interpreted itself. Do we now understand? But we'll read a little bit more. And the sticks whereupon thou writest shall be 
in thy hand before their eyes and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, hello, whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Again, do we understand what the promise is? Do we understand what he's trying to get us to accept? And that is that we will be, that many of us, most of us will die out. Most of us will die out. One day there will be no more breath in my mouth and then I awake at his command, at his voice. So do you. Now in that last day, some of us may be alive. So those who are alive and remain, hey, you'll be caught up with them. But those who don't make it to that far, you will die. And look at what he's going to do. He's going to go ahead and put this nation back together again because we are completely scattered. We're completely lost. We forget his will. 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. So now you know where you're going. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Said that earlier. Neither shall, neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all of their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. Amen. 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. This is the will of God, people. And 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. So out of that line, out of David, David is going to do that. Because the Messiah is going to resurrect David too. And he is from the line of David. So take it how you will. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them and it shall be an everlasting covenant. Hello with them and I will place them and multiply them and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. Because he's Remember, they said he is king of kings, so he'll be a king and he's going to set up kings in that kingdom. So he's going to he's going to resurrect Moses, Abraham, David, Solomon. He's going to resurrect all these people and he is the king of kings. So let's not forget that. It's going to be an everlasting covenant of peace. 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. So we know we're talking about Messiah and this new, the, 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 the Messiah because David's not a God. He's many things, but he's not a God. So we're talking about Messiah here. And 28. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. That's when a new kingdom is here and it is rain and the Lord is reigning out of Zion and everybody is serving him and all of Israel is saved and safely planted in their own land. And when the other nations are giving their sons and their daughters to serve Israel. This is the picture. I'm trying to give you guys the complete picture here as much as humanly possible. I'm trying to give you this picture. So I want you I want you to understand this. This is part of the will of God to clean out the sinners from amongst him. To give a, per, a gift, a gift to you and I, if we accept it. To give us a gift, if you accept it. It's completely up to you, completely free will, if you accept it. And to dwell with you, to dwell with you and I. We're going to continue. We're going to keep going. Let's go to Revelation 21. We may double back here in a second, but let's go to Revelation 21 real quick. Revelation 21, starting at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
and I heard a great voice out of the heavens. Behold, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Look at what, what, what are we talking about here, people? Look at what we're talking about here. Him dwelling with man, dwelling with us. Let, you know, let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Four, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sitteth upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are faithful and true. They are going to happen. Verse six, and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life freely, eternal life, brothers and sisters. Verse seven, he that, overcome, he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. This is what, this is the, this, this is, this is what people miss. They miss this complete picture because they get bogged down. They get bogged down with debate and bickering and backbiting and judging one another. Just like he said uh, in Matthew, if we have to forgive and that's hard. He, he asks us to do hard things. He asks us to do hard things because it's, it's, it's there to shape our character. You want to know why? Because there's a certain type of person and a certain type of people he wants in the kingdom with him. A certain type of people he wants to share that with. He wants to share that with righteous, holy people, not someone that is unclean. He wants you to give what you want from him. You want forgiveness from him? Then practice forgiving. This is all the will of God. This is, this is all a part of his will. And look at the problem. Look at what you get. Look at what you gain. You gain the answers to all your questions. You get the answers to all your questions. No more doubt. No, no more debate. No more striving. No more fighting. What about no more pain? No more tears. No more hurt. Justice will reign. How about justice? What about when we look out in the world and there's a ton of injustice? Do you not see that every day? Do you not see that scrolling through social media? You see the injustice? Look what comes after this. Look at the type of life that he's trying to prepare for it, himself and his children. And his goodness and gracious is that graciousness is that he wants you to share in that. Is that not? I mean, he didn't even need you or I. Doesn't even need us, but yet he wants us to if we accept the invitation. If that's if that's what we want. And yet, no one wants to understand his will. Nobody wants to understand. Nobody wants to submit themselves to that understanding. To submit themselves to his will. No, we'd rather fight about it. Now we'd rather go with our own mind, our own strong delusion. That's, the, that's all. That's all. And he said, he would give, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind, okay? You don't want to listen? Okay, fine. Because we keep toying with it. We keep playing with it. We keep toying with it. Let's go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. When we align ourselves... There's some things we can even have in this life right now. Now, I keep you guys focused on the things ahead. I keep you guys focusing on what comes after this. What's after this? Because this is temporary. No matter what we're going through, this is temporary. So I'm trying to focus you on what's ahead. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, have you focus on the hurdle. I want to have you focus on getting past the hurdle, getting to, to, to have you put your mind towards what is after the hurdle. What's next? What's after that? Focusing on that. Because we can have some good things in this life. You can. That's no problem with that. You can have some good things. You can have some peace and some blessings in this life. He even tells us in Jeremiah, hey, you know what? Where are you going? The, the places you're going to be scattered into, 
build houses, have have a wife and, 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 and children, because you're going to be there for a while. Psalm 37, let's pick it up at 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herbs. And trust in the Lord and do good. So th shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. So you will dwell. We're talking about Jerusalem, right? We're talking about going back there so you can dwell in the land. Now, of course, you can apply to any land right now. You trust in the Lord. Yeah, he can give you some blessings, but there's a bigger one. There's an eternal one. There's one where once you're blessed and once you have it, you don't lose it anymore. That's why I focus on the life after. Because no matter what I get here, it's temporary. In verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. So what is the desire of your heart? What, what, what is it that you want? Because it's part, it's part of the promise. What is it that you want? Now, I'm talking about things that are in line with his will. But you have such a free will. And the Lord allows you to have such a free will that if you choose that other life, the things that are amiss, he'll let you have it. But you're not one of his. If you want to focus on a sinful, lustful life, he, he will let you have it. And you take the consequences thereof, but it doesn't mean that you're one of his. You can't have your will and it's diametrically opposed to his will and then you still get him. You can't be in fellowship with him and in fellowship with the world and still think you have kinship with him. Christ said, he that does the will of my father, it is he that is my brother. There's no getting around that. If he has the keys to the kingdom and it's up to him whom he want to let in, you got to figure that out. You have to figure that out. Everyone, everyone has to figure that out for themselves. This is the will, the will of the Father. This is the will of God. Understanding that will. Tapping into that will. Tap into that will. Pray to the Father, pray to, pray to the Father that one, he'll send you his spirit. And once he does that, then pray that you can hear the spirit. Pray that you have courage to obey the voice. Pray that you have ears to hear what the spirit has to say and wisdom enough to understand what the spirit is saying. Because it's going to be all according to his will. Pray to the Father for that. And he'll direct your path. He'll tell you where to go. Truth is, it's going to come down to, to whether or not you trust him. It comes down to that. Whether or not you trust him. And are, are you going to go his way and follow his will? And this has been, thy will be done. So until next time, I hope someone out there, anyone, has been edified by this lesson. Search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom Israel.